All right, welcome to our show today. Um, we're at the Trinity Lutheran Church in Mountain Lake, Minnesota. I'm here with Pastor Peter Gufal. My name is Terry Karshnik, and we're going to be looking through Luther's small catechism. Good morning, Peter. Good morning. I think that's the first time I ever heard you call me that. Well, change, you're getting more comfortable. <laughs> Well, welcome to our home today. As we begin to look at the Lord's Supper and what this all entails, what it all involves, we wanted to welcome you into our own home to bring you before the altar of our, the Lord our God here at Trinity and Mountain Lake. And so as we begin to talk about this, let's have a word of prayer. Gracious Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for you have blessed us with this meal of your son's very body and blood given and shed for us for the forgiveness of our sins life and salvation there's a lot that goes into this heavenly father and in our mindset there's a lot of hurdles that we need to cross and we can't cross those ourselves we need your holy spirit to guide us by your word to direct us have that better understanding so open your word to us this day, we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, as we dig into Luther's small catechism, he breaks down the whole, it, I don't want to say issue, but the whole sacrament of the altar into a couple different parts. And so we're going to be looking at those today. The first question that he asks is about the nature of the sacrament of the altar. What is it? And so the first question is, what is the sacrament of the altar? And Terry, why don't you read that? It is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ under the bread and wine instituted by Christ himself for us Christians to eat and to drink. Pretty, pretty honest. Yeah. So it's, that's a very condensed and quick version of what it is. It's right. very brief. It's brief. right all there. Yep. But when we look at the scripture, you know, it says, well, where is this written? Mm -hmm. And the evangelist, Matthew, Mark, or Luke, Luke and St. Saint Saint. Paul. Right. Remember, St. Paul was one of the disciples who came in later. Mm -hmm. So he was brought into this. So he had a chance to witness what was going on with the other disciples in the early church as they were celebrating the Lord's Supper. I guess I didn't realize that, but that, that's yeah. interesting. And so, but, but he puts this down in scripture as well. So okay. this was what was being done. Makes sense. So this is what the historical church was doing. And so, but anyway, these four write in Scripture. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he gave given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, and when he given thanks, or he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. I apologize. I, I messed up on a word or two. No, there, it but. pretty much said what you're, you're saying. It was pretty gullous, yeah. But this is the gift that God has given. These are his words and testament. Right. Now, in our day and age, when somebody writes a will, what does that mean? It's what that person wanted for his, for his uh, family to, to listen to him after death. Yeah. Yeah. The final statement. final statement is what I want. Yeah, this is what I want done. <clears throat> Correct. And that's what Jesus gives. You know, this is his last testament. This right. is his testament. This is, you know the gift in which he gives and that he once followed out. So what does Jesus give us then in this sacrament? Well, he gives, it's, it's for our, how do you say it? Mm -hmm. Fulfillment, uh, yeah. giving of his life, uh, giving of his life blood, if you will. Well, his body, body and, and his, his blood. blood. Yeah. It's the two gifts that we we see there, right? right? Right. But wait a minute. We're not eating flesh and no. drinking blood. No, it comes to us in the form of wine right. and bread. Right. And that's it's very clear in here what he's talking about. Right, because there's a little two-letter word that Jesus says in his testament that this is, is my, my body. body. This is, is my, my blood. blood. Yep. 
you know, and as, and it's not picture language. It's not symbolic language. This is what Jesus That's what he said. This is, yeah. And, you know, you think back to the history of the early church, the Christians were often accused of being cannibals because people kept hearing them talking about this sacred meal where they were eating the flesh and drinking the blood of their Savior. Yeah, that would be very easily under, misunderstood. Right. <clears throat> But it was the language in which they were using it. It was what they had. And it wasn't a symbolic thing. When the pastor speaks those words of institution, those words that Jesus had given over that bread and the wine, something takes place. Catholics would call it transubstantiation. That's a big word. That's a very big word. <laughs> Luther couldn't always go, go right there because we're not sure what really happens. We don't see a chain. Mm. But we do know that when those words are spoken, that's not just bread and wine anymore, but it's the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ right. in, with, and under that bread and wine. Right. That, that wafer and that wine is the host for Jesus' body and blood. Right. Correct. And as it's Jesus' body and blood, it's treated as something that's sacred, something that's holy. As we understand it, yes. Well, that's what Scripture that's what dictates. It says. Yes. You know, and so it's something that we hold in regard. We don't treat it with disrespect. We treat it with honor and high regard. Regard. And that's what we should do. Right. But sadly, because of sin in our world, we often don't. This is true. Because this is a meal that Jesus instituted for sinners. For forgiveness. For their forgiveness. Forgiveness of sinners. It's the sin. Yes. Yeah. And so, if you say you're not a sinner. Well, that isn't so. Well, it's not so, but we don't like to say that no, we're sinners. And we don't like to say that we do wrong things either, even if the scripture dictates and shows quite clearly that we are. Well, it does. It does. But we don't want to, we like doing what we want to do at times. And so that brings up another issue, which we'll get to in, a, in another segment in a little bit. But God gives us his body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Right. And for the sinner who recognizes that, oh, there should be nothing that stands in the way. Right. And we don't want anything to stand in that way. No. It's God's gift given and shed for, for you, you for the forgiveness of sins. You have your sins, yes. And so... We're going to pause here for a moment. We're going to pick it up in another video segment. But we thank you for checking in. Keep watching. And if you have any more questions, you can always email us or leave a comment in the comment section below. Or talk with your local Lutheran pastor. God's blessings.